Praise be to God. Today's uh, video is called True Spiritual Growth. <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. <clears throat> His mercies, they'll never come to an end. They are new every morning, and new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, and great is thy faithfulness. Uh, two things that God puts in your life, allows in your life, bitterness and guilt. Like Jesus on the cross when he's hanging there, he had the two thieves. And they're like the two thieves that you have when you're at the most difficult part of carrying your cross, bitterness, guilt. Remember the two thieves of the cross railing accusations at Jesus. These are the two thieves that will accuse you. Bitterness, uh, resentment, unforgiveness. Uh, they'll accuse you because there'll be things that you're experiencing, especially when the cross is at its most difficult and guilt, uh, uh, both bad as each other. And we're going to look, uh, praise be to God, where they truly are. Gifts uh, like Moses, uh, when Joshua was fighting uh, and the sun stood still, amen, Aaron and her held up uh, Moses' hands. Uh, praise be to God for as long as Moses' hands were lifted, amen, Israel was winning the battle. And that's what you're going to be as long as you can hold guilt and bitterness up. Uh, praise be to God. They will not steal from you. <clears throat> you will steal from them. <clears throat> I went into the enemy's camp, stole back what he took from me and stole back what he took from me. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So, amen. Guilt and bitterness now bitterness is is bad because remember the scripture says take heed lest a root root is just small only there's a little bit of bitterness rise up and therefore many be defiled uh, praise be to god so if you respond to bitterness badly it <clears throat> can defile many affect the whole church affect your whole family amen spread like cancer, that's why even just a little bit of bitterness has to be nipped in the bud. And of course, uh, uh, praise be to God, guilt. Uh, and both of these emotions can destroy guilt, can destroy your self-esteem. Uh, amen. People commit suicide because of guilt. Uh, praise be to God. People give up on God because of guilt, can't forgive themselves. Uh, Amen. Judas committed suicide because of guilt. Uh, he couldn't see the love of God for him because uh, of uh, the two emotions of guilt. Now, Satan's favorite one is guilt. The reason being because we all know we shouldn't be bitter. We all know we shouldn't commit adultery. We all know we shouldn't hate. These are the things that we naturally know. But guilty... Guilt is a feeling that we should feel guilty when we do wrong. And that's why Satan loves to use guilt. Uh, amen. <clears throat> because we don't recognize uh, when Satan is using guilt and when the Holy Spirit is using guilt. There's a difference uh, uh, between them both. And that's why Satan's favorite one, as we'll see as we'll go through, is uh, guilt. He destroys many people from growing spiritually through guilt more than anything else because he can disguise himself as uh, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me if those people are new to hearing me. I have a cough because I have some <clears throat> damage to my lung, but praise be to God. I am well apart from that. So I hope it doesn't distract you too much. Praise be to God. So we're looking at guilt and bitterness. Now, the first, uh, we have four lessons uh, uh, how to respond positively to, to both guilt and bitterness. The first one <clears throat> is be careful who you talk to about your feeling bitter. If someone's offended you, <clears throat> done you wrong, 
Be very careful who you uh, confide in. Praise be to God, because if you tell the wrong person about some bitterness, that somebody's done you wrong, amen, uh, their response can strengthen the bitterness. Uh, there's someone you could, you could tell someone you've fallen out with your wife or, or a friend at work, and the person's response, uh, amen, will be to strengthen the bitterness inside of you. And many marriages, uh, amen, <coughs> Are being destroyed because people have told the wrong person about an argument or something that's gone wrong inside of the marriage. A partner may have been unfaithful to you and someone you confided in the wrong person. Next thing is divorce because the person you confide in is strengthened the little root of bitterness uh, which has risen up and defiled the whole family. Amen. Where God said to Hosea, when his wife committed adultery against him, go and forgive her. So God didn't strengthen the root of bitterness. He took the root of bitterness. Praise be to God. So who you confide in is very, very important. Indeed, as we see from the Lord Jesus, amen. When uh, Judas was going to betray him, everybody wanted to know. All the apostles said, is it I? Is it I? Amen. And it may have not been from a spirit to care for Jesus. Uh, it can be just some things people want to know because of gossip. And Jesus didn't tell any of them. <clears throat> now, why is that? Because there's response. Uh, Peter's response. The thing's response. Philip's response, James' response would have been to strengthen bitterness. They would have <coughs> turned around and treated Judas harshly. And all that would have done would have been to, to strengthen bitterness in all of the camp. Remember the root of bitterness and therefore many be defiled by bitterness. So Jesus didn't tell anybody except John. Now why? Because John kept quiet. John didn't say anything to Jesus, neither did he say anything to Judas. Praise be to God. So make sure you tell your grievances to someone who knows how to keep quiet. And remember, if Jesus couldn't trust the apostle Peter, amen, all the other apostles, amen, it means this, it's a rare thing to be able to trust someone Amen. With issues that can cause you to be um, bitter. And remember in John chapter 12, when Judas, amen, was mourning about Mary Magdalene <coughs> giving the alabaster box. He said he was a, he only mourned because he was a thief. Only John knew about that. And all the other gospels, when they talk about the same story, they never talk about Judas stealing from the money because they didn't know why. Jesus didn't tell them about uh, Judas going to betray him. Jesus didn't tell them that Judas was stealing from the money box. Only John. Why? Because John knew how to keep quiet. So to protect yourself from bitterness, uh, preventing you to go, <coughs> amen, uh, spiritually, be very careful who you tell. And I would say in most cases, 90%, you may not have anybody to tell, but you have Jesus to talk to. That's why it's wonderful. He said, man, always ought to pray. Some days I have no one to talk to about, amen, the things that could make me bitter, but I can talk to Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All oh, my sins and griefs to bear. And what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And remember, if Jesus could only trust John and not the other apostles, it shows that most of you are telling people you should not be telling. Why? Because you've not learned how to take everything to God in prayer. Amen. <clears throat> Praise be to God. And, <clears throat> and, um, even it came with, you look at the friends of Job. 
Job and then when he had his friends came to him it says they came and they sat down with him for seven days and they fasted with him and they wore sackcloth and sprinkled dust on their heads that is a tremendous friend imagine a friend coming to you and mourning with you saying nothing they kept silent for seven days and fasted seven days with Job mourning with him truly that's a good friend but watch what happened when the friends began to say the wrong things to Job so much Job said miserable comforters are ye all he said God comforts me Job said through the wicked because these good friends now slowly turned and began to talk to Job in a way to make him bitter or to make him guilty against God so, so even though a friend comes to you and they seem very good friends and they're very quiet it still doesn't mean to say that you should trust them with your secrets uh, because even the good friends uh, could turn around and create bitterness and resentment inside of your heart towards people or towards God amen Absalom uh, praise God sorry David's son Amnon trusted his friend and his friend gave him the wrong advice and he raped his sister which to the end brought death upon him and then you had amen uh, Ab and Solomon's son praise God um, Rehoboam he trusted in his friends uh, and uh, and, and because of that, he lost the 11 tribes of the kingdom of Israel to this day it's split up because people trusted their friends. Why? Because they have not planned to take everything to God in prayer. And that's how you truly grow spiritually. Amen. It's land to put Jesus to take your troubles to God in prayer and be very careful. I can't, amen, stress this enough. Who you confide in. Because that can make all the difference. Uh, to growing tremendously spiritually. Or a root of bitterness coming in. And defiling many inside of your life. And it's the same with guilt. Uh, <clears throat> praise be to God. If you're confessing your sin to someone. You may have stolen from someone. You may have committed adultery. If you choose the wrong person to tell. All you need to see in that person is a, a look of shock. And that can make you feel guilty, praise be to God, which affects your true spiritual growth. When I mean spiritual growth, I mean the, the way that you can find strength to repent from no matter what, amen, you've done. Habakkuk stole like King David. He committed adultery and he murdered, amen. And because God, praise God, didn't send anybody to David to talk to. He waited a whole year for David until David was ready to deal with his guilt. Papa Cousteau, don't respond to guilt too quickly. David, I'm sure, felt guilty, but he didn't respond until the time was right. And after one year, God sent the prophet to him and David responded to the story the prophet said in tears and fell on the ground and repented because God waited but if you tell the wrong person and they make you guilty before your time amen it can take away the strength you need to repent correctly what's the strength the joy it said the joy of the Lord is my strength the joy of the Lord? Is my strength the joy of the Lord? Is my strength the joy of the Lord? Is my strength. Uh, and what takes that joy from you? If you're confiding in someone about an adultery, some people there today, they've, they've raped and they want to confess it. But you know why they can't? Because uh, they're afraid that, Praise be to God that people are going to judge them. So what happens is because the guilt is not the, God, the way that God wants them to feel guilty. I'll, I'll explain to you inside of the uh, book of Leviticus. <clears throat> there's five offerings. Bond offering, uh, peace offering, meal offering, 
sin offering and guilt offering. Guilt's the last. God waited for a year before making David feel guilty to he had the strand. Praise be to God. And what happens is that the Holy Spirit will always convict people. There's somebody out there today that's feeling guilty because they are been having um, thoughts about abusing a child or they maybe have abused a child and they want to confess uh, and they're feeling guilty but they're so afraid that, that people will look down on them and therefore give more guilt than what God wants them to feel. The Holy Ghost guilt makes you repent. Make David repent. Lord, I'm sorry for killing that man. I'm sorry for committing adultery. And then David faced the consequences for his action with strength because it was a Holy Spirit guilt that was patient. God waited. But the trouble is if you tell someone who hasn't got the Holy Ghost Amen. Understanding of guilt. Uh, what happens is that they're shocked to what you're telling them. Praise be to God. Takes away the strength you need to repent. God loves you. His hands are outstretched. He's waiting for you like the prodigal son to come home. And he will forgive you. And he will give you strength to repent and to face the consequences for your actions. But the trouble is, so many of us today, we become shocked. And what happens is like the world today. Amen. The world loves, Satan loves to make people feel guilty. What have you done? What terrible thing have you done? He, he, he runs ahead of the Holy Ghost because he knows the Holy Spirit waits gently. Hoping to give the person strength to repent and strength to face the consequences. So the world is always pointing the finger, amen, and condemnation, making few people feel guilty. And what it, what it does, it stops many people from finding repentance. All oh, sin is the same. Your pride is as bad as the person's adultery rape, murder. Remember, this world is in a condition it is. Why? Because of Satan's pride. Amen. He was prideful. He wasn't a child abuser. He was prideful. And that is what destroyed, amen, the thud of the heaven and what caused the terrible condition of this earth. Your pride, amen, your lying is as bad as any Person sin Abakusto, you contribute to holding Satan's kingdom up. Your pride, your jealousy, your envy strengthen Satan's kingdom. Remember, this Jesus says, A house divided against itself cannot stand. Your sin and my sin helps Satan's kingdom to stand. The terrible demons like pedophilia and rape and murder can come. And affect God's children. <coughs> We're all responsible for each other. And when you believe that, what happens is you patiently listen to people when they confess and express the love for God and give them strength to repent and strength to face the consequences of their actions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. And that's why guilt led by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit guilt, uh, amen, gives you strength uh, to repent uh, and learning not to listen to Satan when he comes in with his guilt because he uses guilt too quickly. If I have, have an argument with my wife and I speak harshly to her, amen, I might wait two months before I say sorry. I'll, cuddle, I'll give her a cuddle and a kiss maybe the next day, but I never respond to Satan using guilt because it takes the strength away to repent and to face the consequences of the actions. Only Holy Spirit guilt can change you. And remember David's story. It took the Holy Spirit a year before 
Amen. He confronted David. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. The next thing, amen. So remember the first thing, understanding guilt and bitterness. The second, praise God, be careful you tell. The third, take responsibility. Praise be to God. If <clears throat> someone has done you wrong, remember, you always look at yourself. You could have done, even so someone has stolen from you, done something bad to you. Amen. Lie to lie against you. Always look at yourself. Maybe I could have loved the person more. Even Jesus, Abba Kusto, eh, praise be to God, said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. Jesus took the responsibility away from us and put it on the cross. Can we take the responsibility like Jesus said to Judas in John 13, what you're going to do, do quickly. Surely Jesus said that you should have said to Judas, Judas, don't betray me. Why? Because Jesus knew that Satan had entered Judas' heart. There's nothing he could do. All Jesus could do is make him remember that Jesus said what you're going to do, do quickly. Almost like giving him permission, loving him, so that when Jesus, Judas had, had um, finished betraying him, he would have remembered that Jesus took the responsibility. And that's how you respond to bitterness uh, when people do you wrong. Always, I always look at myself. Yes, people do me wrong, but I share the responsibility. And that gives me strength against the bitterness. Uh, but when you point the finger at like Adam, Pointed the finger at Eve. Eve pointed the finger at Satan. And what happens is Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden, but not the serpent. Isn't that amazing? Adam was cast out of the garden, and Eve was cast out of the garden, but it didn't say the serpent was because he did not point the finger. Amen. If you share <coughs> responsibility, amen, and when people do you wrong, you keep yourself in the garden of Eden. That means peace. I've got people that have done me wrong in the last couple of months and I feel bad. I'm not pleased inside my heart. I feel some anger. But what gives me the strength to carry the anger, to carry it, is I always take responsibility off them onto myself. Praise be to God. And that always gives you the strength, uh, praise be to God, amen, to carry um, um, the, the bitterness. And it's the same with guilt. Remember, uh, praise be to God, always remember Jesus, amen, saying, forgive you, for you know not what you do. You must always remember that. Satan always is going to say to you, you know what you're doing, praise be to God. Praise be to God. But if you truly had healing in your heart, you wouldn't have done it. Jesus is patient. You may have to go through things 70 times 7 before you learn not to do, but you will learn. Know that Jesus, praise be to God, is taking the responsibility of your sin off of you. Even if it's 50%, it's enough to help you carry the 50% yourself. Amen. And to be able to go through it, amen, when you've done wrong and feel guilty. Some days I feel terrible guilt because of my past, but, but I'm always able to carry. Remember the two thieves on the cross. Both Satan are going to be using guilt and bitterness. Amen. When you're carrying your cross, but I'm able to hang on my cross and to endure the taunts of guilt. Praise be to God because I know Jesus uh, knew that I, I wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. Like Apostle Paul said, I was a terrible person, but I did it ignorantly. It's the Holy Spirit that was taking that of Paul to help him carry the guilt. Oh, praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And remember to know. Um, when, when, uh, when in John chapter 12, when Judas um, was mourning at Jesus and Jesus knew that he was stealing, Jesus didn't, amen, remind him 
that he was stealing. He kept it secret. Jesus didn't pile any more guilt upon Jesus. And remember, that's what Jesus does. The Holy Spirit will not pile guilt upon guilt upon you. And when you know that's Satan doing that. Why? Because he's trying to disable you to not have the strength to repent. And every day we need strength to deal with our bitterness. We need strength to deal with our guilt. Hey, praise be to God. And the only way Satan can do that is to pile, amen, more guilt and accusations upon you for repeated things that you do wrong. Because sometimes in a day we do so much wrong and by Satan piling guilt upon us, what happens is we lose the strength to repent from the lots of things. Hey, praise be to God. So always keep that in mind. Amen. It's Satan is adding more guilt Upon you, praise be to God. Some days, the only thing you'll be able to do to get through the day is just to know that Jesus is loving you and don't listen to guilt when it becomes too strong. Because remember, Satan's favorite gift is guilt, but the Holy Spirit is patience. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And then you'll be like when Judas came to the garden with all the soldiers, uh, Jesus just stood up and all the soldiers fell back. What does that mean? When you learn, amen, to respond to bitterness, to guilt the right way, be careful who you tell. Learn to talk to God more than anybody else. Know the danger, even in the best friends. Remember that Jesus, praise be to God, never piles guilt upon you. It's Satan's favorite gift. Amen. Know that he takes the responsibility away from you. But he does leave you responsibility, but a small amount. Amen. That you might have the strength to repent. But Satan wants to give you Full responsibility, but Jesus doesn't. He shares in it with you. Praise be to God on the cross, enabling you to have the right strength to bear the responsibility that you can bear. Remember the Bible says, um, God will not give you more than you're able to bear. And when you learn the joy of that, uh, then you'll find uh, like Jesus all the soldiers that are coming against you in the day will fall back because you'll have all the joy and the strength of a son of God to deal with all the bitterness, amen, and the guilt that the enemy will, amen, come against you with. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, the joy of the Lord. Abba Kusto. Nearly finished. And then you'll be, uh, you'll be able to overcome what Judas did not in Potter's field. Remember, he couldn't forgive himself and, and then he ended up killing himself. Uh, praise be to God because he couldn't handle the guilt. Remember, remember that, and that was good. Then the money, the 30 pieces of silver, amen, were used to buy the Potter's field. Remember, I told you um, uh, there was a, a, fee, uh, a park near where I take my son to judo called Potter's Field. And I used to avoid it like the plague because it reminded me of the guilt of Judas. But one day my son, amen, when we were playing in the park, ran into Potter's Field to my shock. And when he ran in, I saw that he was doing a number two and he got the mess all over his judo kit. So I had to run into Potter's Field what I had been avoiding. And my son turned and looked at me and said, Daddy, are you angry with me? And I said, no. And then I knew instantaneously that it was the Father, amen, saying to me that he was not angry with me. And I knew no matter what my sins was, I knew that he was never angry for me. He always just wanted me to know his love, to be able to carry the guilt the way he wanted me to, with a strength to repent. Uh, I, knowing that he didn't, and that he loved me and he wasn't angry for me. Hallelujah. No matter, like my son, how messed up my white 
judo kit was with my own poo. And I've come to realize that I am persuaded that nothing shall separate me from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. You may end up doing what Judas did. You may end up committing adultery. You don't know. You may end up killing someone. But God wants you to know, but not deliberately, you may fall into that. You can't deliberately do it, but you may stumble and commit the most terrible crime. Praise be to God. But never forget, Abakustobi, Abakapai, amen, that Satan will come after you with his guilt. But like Judas, don't be like Judas. No, like I knew. No matter how messed up my judo kit was, I know that God loves me and he's not angry with me. He wants me to recover and to find the strength to carry the responsibility I need to face my actions and to find the joy inside of repentance. And that's what I experience every day, no matter what my failings is. And there's many, if you only knew, I've always got the strength to repent because I know that my dad loves me. No matter, no matter what mess I get myself into, praise be to God, because I never listen to the guilt of the spirit that Satan uses, but always the patient, patient guilt that God uses that has all the strength in it to repent from no matter what you do. And remember, only Jesus truly loves you. No matter what you've done, you've committed the most terrible sin. I'm here to tell you, God truly, utterly loves you. And he's not angry with you. He's not. And he's going to give you the strength and the joy to recover from no matter what you've done. Hallelujah. Praise God. True spiritual growth.